Mark chapter 6, verse 7. And Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, they will not listen to you. When you leave, shake off the dust that's on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. Now, we don't know exactly how long this mission trip lasted, but we do know it was for a brief period of time. And if you read down to what happens right after this in Mark, you see the story of how John the Baptist died, which goes from verse 14, where we just left off, all the way down to verse 29. And then you pick up in verse 30, listen to what it says. It says, the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. So at this point, they've come back and they spend time debriefing with Jesus all that had happened on this trip. Here we are in our nation's capital, which interestingly, a lot of people come to Metro DC for mission trips. It just so happens we live here. So let's think about where we are, a metropolitan area of over six million people. And research shows that in this location, where we're going on our mission trip over the next two weeks, about 12.5% of people are in churches. Now, we don't know what kinds of churches, and we do know that just because someone is in church does not mean that they're a follower of Jesus. All kinds of people call themselves Christians and go to church who are not followers of Jesus. But even if we assume that all of the people who are in churches are Jesus people, that still leaves over 5.3 million people in this city where we're doing this mission trip who don't know Jesus. 5.3 million people who, if they were to die right now, would go to everlasting, never-ending judgment and suffering. Like never-ending. Now, usually on a mission trip, you don't know any of these people you're going to be interacting with, but that's different for us during the next couple of weeks because some of these people are your family or your friends or your neighbors. Some are your classmates at school or teammates in sports or people you work out with at the gym. Some are your coworkers. So some of them you interact with all the time. And then there are others you'll interact with for the first time over the next two weeks in a store or a restaurant or wherever else you might go. I think of an Uber driver I met on a ride last week from Soviet Georgia. And as we talked about the war in Ukraine, I asked him, if you were to die today, do you know for sure where you would spend eternity? He looked back at me in the rear view mirror and said, huh. That is a really good question, man. He said, I have no idea. But if I were to guess, I don't think I'd go to heaven. So I shared the gospel with him and invited him to put his trust in Jesus and gave him my contact information to follow up. And there are over five million individual people, men, women, boys, girls, like that Uber driver, right now in this city who don't know Jesus. So we have a lot of work to do together. And that's key. None of us is in this alone. You don't go on a mission trip alone. Jesus gave these instructions in Mark 6 collectively to his disciples and even called them to go out together two by two. So five years ago, I told you about Bihar, India. It's one of the most spiritually and physically impoverished places in the world. Bihar is a state in India about the size of Virginia. The only difference is Virginia has about 8 million people. Bihar has about 100 million people. 
just feel the mass. Spread out across 45,000 different villages. The majority of these people are extremely poor, millions living in desperate poverty, and the majority of them are unreached by the gospel. They've never heard the good news of God's love in Jesus. Bihar is approximately 0.1% Christian. Most Indians in Bihar are Hindu and have been for generations, centuries. But I'll never forget a mission trip I was on in Bihar when I met Anil and Hari. So Anil is a school superintendent. Hari is a chicken farmer. And years ago, these brothers were struggling in their faith, struggling to share their faith when they came to some training that we had helped provide in disciple making. And at this training, they were encouraged to get in groups of two, go into a totally unreached village where there's no Christian, no church, walk into the village, and the first person you speak to use this line, say, hi, we are here in the name of Jesus, and we would like to pray for your village and ask how you can pray. And Anil and Hari looked at each other and said, this will never work. Then they listened some more and they looked back at each other and they said, but nothing else we do ever works, so we might as well try. (laughs) So they got together one day, they went out together into a village, no Christian, no church. They walk through the village and nobody's even paying attention to them until finally near the end of the village, somebody comes up to them says, what are you guys doing here? I don't recognize you. So they start their prescripted line. Hi, we are here in the name of Jesus. And we would, before they could finish the rest of the line, the guy interrupted them and said, did you just say Jesus? Because I've heard a little bit about him. Can you guys tell me more? And they and Hari look at each other, said, yes, we can tell you more. And so they start to share about Jesus. But before long, the guy interrupts them again. And this is where Neil and Hari are thinking, ah, it's about to go south. But the guy says, wait a minute. I really want my friends and family to hear this. Can you come to my house and I can gather them together so they can also hear about Jesus? And Neil and Hari said, yes, we can do that. And so they follow this man to his house. He leaves them there. He goes, gets a group of his friends and family. They come back together. They gather around Anil and Hari and say, please tell us about Jesus. Anil and Hari, for the first time, These people have ever heard, they speak the gospel to them, the good news of God's love in Jesus. And long story short, over the next two weeks, about 20 in that village come to faith in Jesus. So yes, praise God for that part of the story, but here's where it gets better. Because as these new believers have come to faith in Jesus, Anil and Hari looked at them and said, all right, here's what we're going to do. Get together in groups of two. And you're going to go out into other villages like yours, and you're going to go into a village, and the first person comes up to you, use this line, and you're not going to think it's going to work. But it worked on you guys, so just, just go and see what happens. So they go out into village after village. So they start doing that. And within three years, church disciples have been made, and churches had been planted in 350 different villages in Bihar, India. And this Indian brother I met this week is doing the same thing today. He was telling me, tears in his eyes about all that God is doing. So I'm thinking about our church family. Like right here, right now in this city, the opportunity we have to make disciples and multiply churches in the capital of our country. From here around the world, if 20 believers in Bihar, India, starting with two, filled with the Holy Spirit of God, proclaiming the gospel of God, could see what they have seen, how much more with thousands of people going out with the Spirit of God and the gospel of God in Jesus' name in this city? So let's do this. Like all of us, no matter how young or old you are in the faith, whether you're, whether you're a school superintendent or a chicken farmer, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter how far you have to go in this way or that way. Again, think about these disciples. It wasn't about them. It was about him. 